Hey, welcome back to Midas Letter Live. In this segment, my guest is Clint Sharples, and he's the chairman of Heritage Cannabis Holdings Corp, trading on the CSE under the symbol C-A-N-N. Welcome back, Clint. Yeah, thank you. Nice to be back here again. Yeah, so uh, last time I talked to you was about six months ago, and you had uh, a project in BC, and we're just kind of getting going in the whole cannabis thing. Now, you're midway through a takeover of a private company that I happen to be a shareholder of, <laughs> and so I'm quite familiar with, which should make this a very easy conversation. Um, tell me about the terms of the takeover and what your plans are in terms of bringing all of this together. Uh, sure, yeah, but six months ago when we spoke, uh, uh, we were uh, uh, just completing our, uh, our build out in Falkland, British Columbia under FIMED, which is a subsidiary of, of Heritage. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, we had the plans of completing that facility, uh, putting in our evidence pa package, and then getting our, our original license to cultivate. Uh, that all happened. Mm -hmm. In fact, we had our license awarded to us about three weeks ago, and uh, it was in uh, a phenomenally short period of time. It was uh, seven weeks from evidence package being submitted to, uh, to being awarded. Uh, we have a fantastic team out in British Columbia and did a great job. Great. Uh, in looking at that, our, our, our team uh, that I talk about out in BC has a lot of uh, um, Potentials in the industry were getting approached by a lot of uh, a lot of people who are looking at uh, partnering with us in some way, shape, or form mm -hmm. in providing products uh, to uh, to be able to bring to uh, uh, the Canadian market and other various markets. Uh, in looking at that, uh, we uh, we needed to find a little bit more capacity. Uh, we are we're building as quick as we can out in British Columbia, but uh, at this point in time, we have. Uh, uh, you know, 50, little over 15,000 square feet of total facility and adding greenhouses. Uh, right now, four greenhouses, 40,000 square feet of greenhouse are being added. Uh, more are being ordered and will be brought in shortly. Uh, however, uh, in looking at the market and uh, with obviously now with legalization being announced and we have a, a date, um, not sure how quickly the market will adapt to that date, but uh, we want to be prepared for at least to be able to be in full swing by, uh, by Q1 2019, mm -hmm. which is when we believe the actual Canadian market will be uh, ready to start um, uh, properly uh, mm -hmm. going retail. So in that, we went looking for uh, someone who had uh, some decent scalability, had a, a setup right now, and, uh, and future plans that uh, really showed uh, that, uh, that they had the blue sky potential. Uh, Canacure uh, came to our attention uh, via uh, a consultant we're working with who we had hired to, uh, to go and find someone uh, that met this criteria. And uh, after meeting the people, a uh, great group of people, and, um, and seeing their facility, wonderful state-of-the-art facility down in the Niagara region. Uh, I'm not sure when the last time you were able to tour it was, but they've done a, a fantastic job with building, uh, building their first 24,000 square feet mm -hmm. inside a 122,000 square foot facility. So that kind of scalability on an indoor grow was, uh, was very uh, exciting to us. Uh, but in addition, uh, they have the, uh, an option to acquire over 3 million square feet of uh, existing greenhouse, uh, which is uh, currently producing, uh, doing produce produce, uh, production. Uh, uh, very interesting to us as there's current cash flow in that business, current profits, and, uh, uh, and could be segregated off and you can grow uh, cannabis or hemp at a certain scale, depending on what you wanted to do and how you wanted to introduce it. Sure, yeah. The, uh that greenhouse I've been to actually a few times because uh, I was kind of trying to help uh, locate a partner for them as well. Um, the thing that attracted me most about it was the idea that you could, for zero capex investment, you could immediately crank up 30 acres under poly and grow a, not perhaps the ultra premium flower, but you could certainly grow a lot of cannabis yes. in a greenhouse scenario, and you could do so with no extra lighting, with a with a minimum investment in uh, in HVAC, and so I'm I'm excited to see that this is moving forward. Yeah, it's it's a world class facility, no doubt, mm -hmm. uh, and not only that, there's a world class team of growers there too. Yeah, uh, what's the uh, do you, are you co co uh, conversant with the economics of the existing greenhouse operation? How much are they producing a year? 
Uh, yeah, on, on the produce side, yeah, yeah we've, uh, we've had an opportunity to uh, review their financials, got an NDA, can't talk about it, they're a sure. private company, uh, uh, but uh, it's an impressive outfit. Uh, yeah. they, they've, uh, they, they know what they're doing in growing, they know what they're doing in, in selling the products they have right now, sure. and uh, they seem to be pretty anxious to get going into this business too. Right, right. So then does that mean the uh, greenhouse operation in Leamington would be activated next year if you were to complete the acquisition of Canacure? We have, we have a little bit of time to, uh, to figure that out. Um, right now, with uh, the way that uh, the, the, the product, uh, when the product gets grown down in Leamington, it would likely be for extraction material. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's uh, fantastic to us uh, if we get into the export of, uh, of some oils and uh, extraction materials. Uh, however, a lot of that needs to be figured out with Health Canada. We are uh, excited to join uh, the rest of the uh, industry with edibles, with uh, capsules, with anything that that will be eventually uh, brought forward by Health Canada and legalized as what you've seen in the United States moving from the dry flower market to largely the edible market yep. has been has been the movement uh, for sure. uh, for the entire dollars and cents. Okay, so how so you've got your license now in Falkland. Um, the license with Canacure is is forthcoming at some point. I'm assuming. We're hoping so. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, uh, Health Canada has uh, their evidence package and has uh, reviewed it, so it's uh, we're, we're getting there. So then, I guess you're going to start supplying the market from your facility in Falkland. Correct. And when do you expect to actually be able to bring product to market from that? We'll be completed our first grow by the at the end of this year, this calendar year. So it'll be early early into Q1. Mm -hmm. um, uh, obviously, with uh, uh, FIMED having a, a uh, sales ability uh, via the Canopy Growth Program, uh, they've been fantastic with us. Uh, they're good people to deal with, and and we're very happy to be part of that. Particular, particularly given the the slow onset of uh, retail outlets uh, yeah. in all the provinces. Uh, so you're still looking at primarily uh, online ordering and, 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 and courier or mail delivery. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're happy to be a part of uh, that canopy uh, process. And it, it, we're looking at doing a controlled build. There's, there's not going to be any, um, any try to blow this whole thing up and be everything to everybody overnight. Uh, that's, that's a recipe for failure. Right. I've run businesses before. Uh, I've had uh, built team management teams and uh, we've had uh, steady growth that uh, delivers profits and we're not looking at doing anything differently in this. Hmm. Interesting. Um, the CapEx requirement to realize all of your near-term goals, how much do you need and how much do you have now? Well, there's a, it kind of splits, splits into needs and wants right, right. now. Uh, so on the need side, uh, both uh, both Fiamed and uh, Canacure have completed their phase one uh, build. A few little things here and there to finish off, but uh, nothing major. Uh, Fiamed's fully into their phase two expansion with the greenhouses. Uh, we need to fund some greenhouses, so there'll be uh, a few million dollars of requirement there. Uh, Canacure has a uh, phase two uh, budget. Uh, their phase two is split into two, uh, so it's a phase two A and a B. Uh, and uh, to get moving on the A would be uh, about a five million dollar build. Uh, Canacure will uh, will uh, review their phase two plans, uh, given an overlap now with FIMED. Uh, we'll look to figure out where is the best utilization of capital. Uh, it might be more on the extraction side than on the grow side, uh, mm -hmm. but that'll be something that uh, that our team, who knows way more about this than I do, uh, they'll they'll dive into that. And between the cannabis and FIMED teams, they'll find out a good uh, a good solution for that. Sure. So, are the uh, investment banks at this point open to financing? Uh, operations at your stage of development at this point in the cannabis space? Sure, they seem to be. Yeah. Uh, we've had uh, we've had early discussions with them. Uh, we're we're very recent in announcing this. Very recent in announcing our license. So we've had uh, some conversations uh, this week and uh, more scheduled for next week. Well, we'll be choosing our partner, our partners, to uh, to help us get to our financing goal. Okay. Well, that's a great update, Clint. We're going to leave it there for now. We're going to come back to you as things develop. Thank you very much for joining me today. Hey, thanks for having me again.